Live Lee Nation, what is up? Welcome back to episode number 76 here at our hashtag Ask Live Lean TV show. Missing my beautiful co-host today. Guys, for the last two episodes, so she did it last week on her own, a solo round. I'm doing this as a solo round just because we don't have access to babysitters right now for our little babies and family comes first here. So she's watching the kids. I'm gonna answer your questions. So if you're new to the show, guys, this is the show where we take your questions when you post them on our Instagram, at TV. We put out a story and we put a question tag in that story, typically on Monday. So make sure you're watching the Instagram stories and we ask you for your questions. So we got a few questions today. I asked for questions specifically for me to answer since I'm the only one on the show. So let's jump into it. And we always answer the questions first when you use the secret hashtag. So how do you figure out or find out what that secret hashtag is? Guys, you gotta be watching our vlogs that we post on Mondays. We always give a secret hashtag in that vlog. And the keyword for the podcast hashtag to get your questions answered is hashtag sunbasket. That if you use that in your question, you will be guaranteed to get your questions answered on the show because we have too many questions to be able to answer everything. So let's jump right into it. First question from Trisha MB12 says, hashtag sunbasket, hint, hint. What is your advice for helping to get a couch potato to join a healthy lifestyle? This is a great question. There's actually, I, I noticed there was another question in here as well, which I'll answer it because they're both very similar. This was from Hetel Adea says, hi Brad, what can I do to encourage my husband to work out? He refuses every time. So both those questions are quite similar in the same vein. So let me just get to this, especially speaking from a dude's perspective. And I actually did a video on this a long time ago, it was like seven years ago, I remember I just actually saw it again, where I covered how to get your man to eat healthy, I think is what it was called. I'll link it up down below because I go into more detail in that video. But essentially, the best thing to do is to lead by example. Now I know that may seem like that's not gonna be an instant thing, like it's not gonna happen right away, but I'm telling you as a guy, being nagged by, and I use the word nag, but whatever you wanna call it, being pushed or influence somebody when they don't wanna be influenced can be very annoying, especially if it's repetitive. So I always say lead by example. Now this is gonna be a long-term approach because if you're leading by example, if you're like following a program, you're getting great results, and then he's gonna see you and he's gonna be like, damn, this girl's got her stuff together. So that's what I always recommend. Lead by example, hopefully he will see the positive changes in your health, your energy, your just your overall well-being, and he's gonna follow along. And you can also, when you're cooking meals, you can show him how the meals that you're cooking with healthy ingredients actually taste good. That's the other thing. Like A lot of people think that meals, if they're healthy, they're not gonna taste good. But guys, as we prove time and time again, we posted that over probably 300 cooking videos, real food can taste delicious. So lead by example, cook them some of these meals, tell them what's in the meals, and then let your results do all of the persuading and the influencing, guys. So hopefully that answers your question. Let's move on to another one with the hashtag sunbasket. That was the keyword. Um, from Alondra Lopez Photography. Hey Brad, will you be writing another book? All right, so guys, I've written two books to date. Uh, my first book was Awaken the Abs Within. I published that back in 2011, 2012-ish time frame. And then I wrote Think and Live Lean back in 2015, 2016-ish. Now, those books I poured my heart and soul into. There's so much effort and so much work that goes into writing a book. So for me to go back down that journey Again, right now I don't have a good idea for a book because I poured it all out in Think and Live Lean. I did Think and Live Lean because that book is the missing link in our kind of our product suite. So we have workouts, we have cookbook and recipe books, we have meal plans, we give it all to you, but a lot of times that missing aspect of Living Lean is the mindset. So that's why that concept for that book came up is like we gotta change people's mindsets first and then the actions will take care of themselves. So it's kind of like with your with your phone. You, your phone is the hardware, but the software that runs the hardware is the mind. So think about your body as the hardware, the software is the mindset. So that book right there, guys, if you haven't picked that up yet, please do so. And if you have read that book or you listen to the audiobook, because I also have it on an audiobook, please go leave a review as well. But to get back to your question, I do have a somewhat of an idea, but I still need to massage it to really make it work. But it's kind of like 
the next potential book that I do write will be the overarching, like the blueprint of everything to live lean. So keep your eyes open, your ears open for that. We'll see if I can ever find time to get to that. But I still, yeah, I can still see one more book on the way. Okay, next question from Horsley Crystal, hashtag sunbasket. Do I really need to count my calories? Okay, so this depends on you. Now, I've talked about this before. When I was in my early journey, I counted calories and I used that experience as my nutrition PhD. So by getting in the trenches and learning the value of a calorie, so learning what protein, what carbs and fats are and the vitamins and the minerals, those micronutrients that make them up, you can kind of eyeball portion sizes once you get that education. But if you haven't gone down that road and you haven't invested that time yet, that's when I recommend you actually dig deep and just go into that zone of counting calories, of measuring your food, portioning it out for maybe you know two to three months, maybe even one month, depending on how quickly you pick it up. And then once you have that knowledge, then you can actually apply it by just looking at a plate. And the other kind of overarching reason for doing that is, is if you have a big goal in mind and you have a fast timeline. So if you want to really expedite your results, dialing in your nutrition by counting the calories during that short period of time can really help you speed up the results. Or like if you're trying to get ready for a photo shoot, a fitness competition, um, a beach vacation, or you just really have a real why, a real reason why you need to change, that's when I would say start counting calories, okay? But if you're just kind of living the lifestyle, you're not really training for anything in particular, and you're in maintenance mode like we are, we don't count calories on an ongoing basis. All right, so that's all of the hashtag sunbasket keywords. So I got a lot of questions here. So it seems like a lot of you guys aren't watching the vlogs yet, guys, so watch the vlogs. All right, next question from Mr. McDonough 14 says, Brad, what's your skincare regimen, broski, <laughs> uh, bro Hamsky? Now, the reason I know this question came up because he DM me on Instagram. Somebody also DM me on Instagram based on one of my posts on my personal Instagram account, at Brad Guthrow. Go follow me, guys, if you're not following me over there yet. And they just said something to me like, let's give it up for Brad and his healthy looking skin. Like, how do you do it? Um, so it was just one of these random DMs that I got from somebody and so I reposted it because I was laughing because they actually asked me to do a skin tutorial on my skincare routine and then I posted it and other people were like, yeah, we'd love to see it, we'd love to see it. I'm the same age as you and I don't look as, your, my skin doesn't look as healthy as you. So this is why these things are coming up and I gotta be honest, like I'm not a skincare guru. guru. I really don't do anything out of the ordinary, like I don't use a secret lotions or anything. Like I moisturize every day. I've moisturized every day since I was probably 13. And to kind of back it up a little bit, like when I was a teenager and in my early 20s, like I had really bad skin. Um, not like terrible skin, but I had acne to the point where like it would really drag me down for the day or really make me depressed to go out knowing that I had like this pimple or pimples over my face. I did a lot of research on it. I tried a lot of the, those ointments and those astringents like the benzoyl peroxides on my skin that just really dried it out. I used all those soaps and cleansers to try to get rid of the oil on my skin and then it just made it completely worse. So I'm not necessarily sure if this question is more about acne or if it's just about keeping your skin looking healthy, but essentially what I did was I stopped washing my face with these soaps and these astringents, just basically use a moisturizer daily and eat healthy. I think the major thing is eating healthy, exercising, and drinking a lot of water. That's gonna be great for your skin. So you get those three things in place and you, know, you just continually do it over a long period of time and your skin is just gonna look healthier. All right, yeah, yeah, oh, one, seven, seven says best workout for cellulite. Um, so the best workout for cellulite that we have would be definitely the build a butt program. So you can go build a butt or you could go build a butt extreme. Build a butt extreme is probably a better program for you if you're looking to get rid of cellulite. Um, but Jessica did a great video and we'll link that up down below if you haven't picked up that program yet. But Jessica did a great video on how to reduce cellulite. She gave visual examples of what's going on underneath the skin, why it's happening, how you can overcome it. So I'll also link up that video down below. That's more of like a Jessica um, specialty with the female side of things. Um, but I do know like resistance training, eating the right types of foods like 
foods higher in protein. So focusing on building muscle in those areas can really help reduce cellulite. So um, go check out Build a Butt Extreme. We'll link it down below. And I will also link that video that Jessica put out that goes into a lot of details for you to check out. All right, next question from K underscore DJ86. What do you think about fat burners for an extra help on losing body fat? Now, I'm not a huge fan of fat burners. Now, the reason is I actually tested fat burners. Back in the day, um, I tried some fat burners and I like the energy boost that it gives you because it's a lot of caffeine in it. But then when you go off of them, that's when you kind of crash and you can, you know, you're kind of like craving that, that um, caffeine that you're not getting and you kind of go on a little bit of a, like a lull. And I never experienced any noticeable fat loss changes from it. So I just liked it for the energy. So I would take it before the workout, but that was like seven years ago and I haven't done it since. And from my opinion, it's not something you should be putting your money into. If you're going to want to lose those last few pounds of body fat, Dialing in your nutrition is the best way to do it. So you're gonna to have to start, like I said, start counting calories, start portioning out your food, start following a meal plan, and make sure those workouts are on point. So to lose those last few pounds, your workouts and your nutrition are key. It's not gonna be like you're missing a supplement and that's what's gonna help you get to that, you know, that finish line, especially not when it comes to a fat burner. So I would say X and A on the fat burner and I'd say take that money, put it into a program, put it into your food and let's get you the best results ever. So if you haven't tried any of our programs yet, guys, go take the Live Lean Body quiz and it's gonna tell you or it's gonna ask you a few questions and you can answer them. It's gonna direct you into the right program based on your goals, your fitness level and your access to to equipment. That's the way to lose those last few pounds, not a fat burner supplement. Let's go people. All right, Silver Rose 6 says, how long do you normally work out for and what are some of your go-to carbs after workout? So I typically, my the workout portion of my workout, so not including the warm up and the cool down, would be about 40 to 45 minutes. And that's primarily resistance training. Now the warm up is about four to five minutes and then the cool down is about maybe five, sometimes 10 minutes. But so I'm basically in and out of the gym within 60 minutes. Now it depends on what your goal is as well, but typically all our programs will get you in and out of the gym in less than 60 minutes. And then what are some of your go-to carbs after a workout? So I like berries and I also like maple syrup as that fast acting carbohydrate to help shuttle the amino acids from the protein into your uh, glycogen muscle cells so you can repair and refuel after a workout. So I typically will throw in some maple syrup and some blueberries, some strawberries, some raspberries into a shake and you're good to go. Honey is also another fast acting carbohydrate that you can have um, in replacement of the maple syrup. Okay, next one from Liseth. 0221 says, how have you managed to stay away from MLMs? <laughs> um, I always getting messages from them. Yeah, I get, I'm not staying away from them because I get messages from them all the time. Um, so MLMs, if you're not aware, they're marketing, what is it? Multi-level marketing companies. I get messaged all the time, but it's not something that I'm interested in doing or getting involved in. Okay, question from vmary01. What supplements should I take if I, if I work doing construction 10 hours a day? Wow, 10 hours a day, like you are putting your body through the work. So you, your, your energy levels are definitely, or actually your activity level is very high at a job like that. So I did a post on the top two supplements that I take all year round, regardless of kind of like what your goals are. One is protein powder and the other is fish oil. So especially if you're in construction, you're doing heavy lifting and everything, fish oils will be very beneficial for your joints to make sure that they're, they're staying healthy because if you're lifting a lot of things, you're probably gonna be sore a lot. Um, protein is great for recovering your muscles after lifting construction and doing all the construction work. So that's another great one. Um, you know, if you need a boost in energy, like you could take a pre-workout as would, would work for that. Um, branch chain amino acids would be another one, but because that's similar to a protein will help repair your muscles when they're broken down. But I would typically say like stick to the majors. So again, it's the protein, it's the fish oils, and then figure out if you're deficient in anything because that's what a supplement is for. A supplement is to make up, to supplement for something that's deficient in your diet. So if you're not eating enough greens or vegetables and you're eating a lot of fast foods, then that's when a greens powder can come into play because that's gonna give you the vitamins and the minerals that you need that you're not getting through food. So it's really hard to just say you should take these supplements, but those are some high level thinking behind 
behind certain supplements that could potentially help you in your situation. All right, Kathy Figueroa says, thoughts on Halo ice cream. Seems to be the new healthy ice cream. I've tried Halo ice cream and it's not that I didn't like it, it's just I didn't like it enough to buy it. Um, I used to have a huge sweet craving for ice cream, as you guys know. I used to crush Dairy Queen blizzards, but then for some reason it just disappeared. I stopped having it and then that craving for it just disappeared. So I never crave ice cream anymore. I don't even like want ice cream. Like if it was healthy, I don't even think I would want it. I think it's just because the dairy and the sugar combination just really did not make me feel good after a while. And I just finally said I'm done with it. But I know Halo, like you said, it does have healthier ingredients in it. If you like ice cream, it's a better alternative for you. But you know, I'm not recommending you to take it if you don't like ice cream, but most people do like ice cream. So if that's you, Halo is a healthier alternative than your traditional ice creams. All right, next question from McKinsey Testa. Uh, says, any tips for dealing with an injury mentally? I have a stress fracture, been out for three months. Ah, I do see some of your stuff on Instagram and I know you're a singer and you crush it and you're a dancer. So big ups to you, so I know how tough having an injury like this can be on somebody like you and that when that's your active lifestyle. Fortunately for myself, I've never actually had a broken bone or a fracture in my life, so I can't speak from personal experience on how I dealt with that myself. I just know as long as you keep this in your mind that this is short term, like you're still young, um, you got so far to go, there's so many more years that you have to be active and to, to maybe get back into shape if this kind of throws you out of it a little bit. Just try not to be too hard on yourself. Like This is a time where your body needs to recover. But it's not to say you should just sit on the couch all the time and not do anything. Like do what you can do to work around that injury and just, you know, from a mental standpoint, maybe take this time that you're not in the gym or you're not working out, take that time on working on your mind by doing like meditation and those sort of things. Um, meditation to me has been amazing. I've kind of fallen off it a little bit, which I'm very disappointed at. I gotta get back into it again, um, but try meditation. So taking that time that you're usually working out and apply that to meditation and you should be good. All right, Alicia1794 says, what is the best thing to do when you've plateaued? So when you've plateaued, that simply means like your body's not changing anymore. So the reason for that typically is you're doing the same thing over and over again and your body's just like, okay, I'm good. Like I've grown, I've changed, but now I have adapted. So that stimulus that you're putting on my body I don't need to change anymore because I've adapted to make it easier on me, then I'm not changing. So that's what a kind of a plateau is. So if it's a plateau based on muscle building or fat loss, you need to change things up. That's essentially what it comes down to. So when it comes to your diet, you need to manipulate the calories or maybe the macronutrients. Like where are your calories at? If you're looking to build muscle, let's try to bump those calories up a little bit to maybe 100 to 200 more calories a day. See what happens to your body in that plateau. If you're losing to lose, if you're looking to lose weight, even adding in some calories to try to speed up your metabolism again could be another way to do that. So it really depends on why you're having the plateau. So is it a fat loss plateau? Is it a muscle building plateau? And is it a food thing or is it a workout thing? So when it comes to your workouts, you need to change it up as well. You can't keep doing the same reps, the same sets, the same tempos, the same exercises, the same rest periods, and think your body's gonna keep changing. You need to be lifting either heavier weight, you need to be changing up the exercises, you need to be changing up the training styles. Like there's so many different things that you could be doing with your workouts than doing the same things over and over again. And that's why we always recommend people get on a program because when you're on a program, you take your mind out of it. Like you don't make the decisions anymore. The blueprint in the program will tell you exactly what you need to do. So you're not gonna stay in that conversation zone, you're going to just be like, okay, you have the program on your phone. You're like, this set is this exercise, this amount of reps, this tempo, this rest periods, and let's go. You do it. So a lot of the times when you get on a new program, the next day you wake up and you're feeling super sore because your body has just been broken down and it, it's not used to that stimulus that you just put on it. So I would recommend you get on a program. And like I said earlier, go take that Live Lean Body quiz at liveleantv.com forward slash quiz and we will get you on the best program for you. So we'll link that down below. Okay, Jacqueline Castro says, are you currently invested in a fitness coach? Why or why not? So currently I'm not invested in a fitness coach in the reason for that is because I'm in maintenance mode right now. Like I'm not looking to get any bigger, any stronger, to lose any more weight or to learn any new tricks. Um, if I was, like if I was really determined and I had a really strong why, 
then I would get on a fitness coach. So a prime example of me hiring a fitness coach, I have no problem saying it. Like I will definitely hire a fitness coach. Like I'll set my ego aside and put my money into another fitness coach if they have a technique or they can do something that I'm not ready yet to do. So for example, flips. So if I was really focused and really strong on wanting to get better at flips and I do want to be able to do a backflip, but my why and my reason is just not strong enough yet for me to you know, focus on that, that's when I would hire a coach. Or if I was looking to increase my speed on my 100 meter um, sprints or my 40 meter dash, I would hire like a speed coach, those sort of things. But when it comes to like strength, muscle or fat loss at this point, I'm just in maintenance mode and just with my lifestyle right now of being a dad, driving this business, um, I just don't have time to focus. That's just not a priority of mine right now to try to get better at flips and to increase my speed and sort of thing. But when I do get to that cycle of my life, I will definitely put my money into a fitness coach. Okay, Cherish H24 says, Hi Brad, is it better to train hit in a warm room or in a colder room with air conditioning? So this really comes down to personal preference. Like if you are one of these people that are freezing cold all the time and when you get that way, you just don't want to move or you just want to kind of huddle in a corner, that's when you'd want to be in a warm room. And if you're in a warm room and that just makes you tired and sluggish and sweaty and you don't like that, then you'd want an air conditioned room. So from a physical standpoint or from a science perspective, I don't think there's really any benefit from one or the other. Um, so I would find, say just choose a training studio or wherever you're doing your HIIT workouts based on what you feel like your performance is better at. Or do you train better when it's cold? Do you train better when it's hot? Me personally, I'm kind of like in that middle zone I don't want to train when it's too hot because it just makes me feel sluggish and I don't want to train too cold because it increased the risk of potential injury as well. So just try to find that happy medium. All right, guys, that is it. That is another Ask Live Lean TV show. Thank you guys so much for watching on YouTube. And if you're listening over on the podcast, stay tuned because we're going to have the extended audio version of one question over there. And guys on YouTube, get over on the podcast. Make sure you subscribe on the podcast because I do understand these videos can be long. Some people can't don't have time to watch them from start to finish. But the great thing about the podcast is you can listen while you're doing other things. So it's kind of secondary. It's it's a passive way of, of, of engaging and learning from content. So you can listen to us while you work out, while you're in your car. I love podcasts. We would really love to start growing our podcast channel even more. It's on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts, we should be there. And if we're not, tell us in the comment section below and we will get on that platform. All right, YouTube, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the show and how we can improve this show to make it more worthwhile for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Living Lean.